So maybe I'm just getting old, but back in the day, in the uh, early 2000s, um, when the U.S. was hunting Al Qaeda and Bin Laden, right? So Bin Laden, they bomb a mountain and just say, "Oh yeah, we killed everybody," and then you know Bin Laden will pop up with a video, ah, you know, I'm I'm here, I'm not dead. And that's kind of how I feel right now. <laughs> yeah, as stupid as that is, I know that I like I disappear all the time, and then I come back with videos, and then I come back on a streak and then I die out. Kind of like my inconsistencies with YouTube and social media in general, right? I have obviously disappeared, right? Disappeared from YouTube, di disappeared from social media in general, just because I have been so inundated with my two new jobs, right? My wholesaling business, number one, and now my new CRM business that has been taking off like crazy. I don't like advertising stuff on my channel, even my own stuff, right? Like I don't ever advertise my courses, like when I do, it's like one video and then you'll never hear about it again. Just because I feel like, you know, if you guys are going to watch, watch because you want to learn, not because I want to sell you something, right? But my CRM has been taking off. It has been doing well, not because like it's anything special or crazy, but maybe just because it works, right? Uh, so many CRM sellers out there, so many people out there selling something. And most of that stuff is either very complicated. You got to know what you're doing. You got to learn to figure it out. There's just a lot of different moving puzzles to, or moving pieces of the puzzle to make it work. And I felt like, you know, for me, I, I can do that, right? Cause I'm, I'm kind of really tech savvy. I have a, you know, a really good knack for making things work. But I know there are a lot of you guys out there who are not that great at it. And that's cool, you know, I'm not making fun of you whatsoever. But I created my CRM for guys like you that you don't know how to program, you know, uh, REI reply or go high level or whatever you want to call it. You don't know how to put together Zapier. You don't know how to do anything in it and you don't have a marketing plan, right? So I developed my own CRM. It has a built-in marketing plan. We manage it for you. The only thing you have to do is like literally use it. It's fully built, nothing for you to do. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. Uh, I got guys that can barely read their email that are generating leads every single day. That just goes to tell you right there it works. And I've actually like refrained from advertising it because I didn't want a lot of people to sign up because, you know, it takes away from other stuff in my life. I've had to shut down my signups just because I had to take a break because I was literally making accounts every single day. We have over 50 active users on it, generating leads every day. We are like a community. We have meetings twice a week or tw once every two weeks, not twice a week, once every two weeks. And we, we just, we try to um, kind of help each other out and also close deals together. It's kind of like my own little community of wholesalers. There's no such thing as a nationwide wholesaling company, but uh, I would like to have a nationwide group of wholesalers. Obviously, if you sign up, you're not a guy who is just testing the waters. You're looking to generate leads and make money, right? So enough about that. This year has been, you know, kind of wild. I've had so many deals that were like on the fence of closing. They closed and some didn't close. I had title issues. You know, 2023 has not been very nice to anybody, right? You knew wholesalers have it a lot harder because now you have to actually get a good deal to sell it. And vet, veteran wholesalers are just kind of chucking along or chugging along, you know, like it's nothing. You know, well, we're back to 2019 because that's the way I feel. I feel like I'm back in 2019. But at the same time, you know, there's still some challenges in the marketplace as far as like staying compliant with text messaging, phones now too. I had to look back at last year and really you know, take a look and see what happened that I made money, but I also realized I lost a lot of money. So in case you guys don't know, I use REI SIFT, right? So I use REI SIFT. REI SIFT is really powerful. Link down in the description if you want to sign up for it. Really great program. Definitely not for guys that don't want to manage their data, right? Yes, I said that right. Not for guys who don't want to manage their data. So I rely heavily on my data. Your data is the most powerful tool that you have in your toolbox when it comes to anything that you do, right? Whether you're wholesaling or whatever business that you're in. What I was looking at was I wanted to see every single property that was in my system that sold from January 1st of last year until December 31st of 2022 to see how much money I lost. I closed about 60 to 80 deals roughly. I don't really know the full number off the top of my head. But I know I sold or wholesaled over 100 properties um, in general. 
whether they were package deals, whether they were lots, package lots, one transaction could have been over 10 to 15 properties. When I looked at the data, I don't have it right in front of me right now, but I know this off the top of my head because it was so crazy. I lost over 740 properties in my entire system. 740. Now I know what you're thinking, oh, you know, that could be anybody. Those could have been retail leads. I was like, you're right. Absolutely right. But then I, I went back and I looked through each and every single one of them. I wanted to see where they sold. And about 80% of all of those properties sold were off market real estate deals, meaning that they were not on the MLS. They were not listed by a realtor. That is pretty big. You know, like what, what are the numbers on that? Let me see that. So the 740, right? And then uh, we'll multiply a 0.8. So that means 592 wholesale deals happen or investor deals, you could call them. 592. If I multiply that by 15,000, that's my average assignment fee, roughly. Uh, it's give or take a little bit more, but we like to use lower numbers, right? That means I lost out on $8.8 .8 million in assignment fees. That is the real number right there. 8.8 .8 million, that is a lot of money, right? Like it hurts me, it hurts my heart and my soul. It's like, <gasps> that's a lot, that's a lot. Out of all those 740 though, you know, obviously some of them, you're not gonna be able to get, get in contact with them for whatever reason, maybe they just never responded to your marketing. So I looked at that too. I wanted to see, okay, how many people did we talk to? How many correct numbers did we have of those ones that sold? So when I went back and looked, it was 190 deals. I'm like 190, like we had their info, like what happened? What happened? So diving a little bit deeper into it, 60 of them were my active follow-ups, 60 deals. So that means those extra 60 deals that I could have made that were in my active follow-ups that we dropped the ball on, right? $15,000 per, per uh, deal, it's 900 grand worth of follow-ups that went missing. That itself was devastating. But what was more devastating was what happened to those other deals, right? Out of that 190, 60 were follow-ups. The, the other 130 were not interested from 2021. And I was like, holy crap. I was like, wow, how did we lose all the not interested from 2021? That's that's crazy right there. Like what happened there? What, what, what was the process there? And the, the problem was that my follow-up on the not interested is twice a year, or not even, it's once a year. And I realized, I'm like, man, that, that's why I lost out because there was people there that said, yeah, I'm not interested right now. And then three months later, they ended up selling to somebody else. And I'm like, what changed when they told me they weren't interested? Out, out of all those 190, even if I would've got the full 190, let's say my, my follow-up game is so strong, 190 times 15,000, that's $2.8 million worth of assignment fees loss. We're, we're bleeding money here, guys. Like, I need some milk right about it now. <laughs> Just because it's, it's, it's heart-wrenching, right? Spent so much money on advertising. We spent so much so much time and, and hard work to get these deals done. The fact that we lost that on so much money, you know, it's it hurts. It hurts a lot. But, you know, granted, yes, I, I generated 1.4 million in assignment fees. So an extra 8.8 .8 million would have been nice, right? Uh, my team would have liked that. I'm pretty sure each person on my team would have became millionaires. What I realized was that people are only gonna answer the marketing that you, or the marketing that they want to answer you on. I always go back to this lady that I did uh, a couple years ago. She had a beat up house, been driving for dollars and getting this house for a long time, hit her with a lot of marketing. We called her, we texted her, we ringless voicemailed her, got already three pieces going out and each one, you know, I don't, I don't send one text. I send four or five, six. We hit this lady about six times of marketing. Out of those six times, she never answered. I sent her three pieces of mail and then she still didn't answer, all right? So we got four different marketing channels. She ended up logging onto the website that was on the mailer submitting her information for us to call her. So there's five marketing methods right there. Five. Call, RVM, text, uh, what was it? Mail, and then website. So if I didn't have the website, she would have never had uh, submitted her information, right? 
We called her, uh, we wholesaled that house and made like 30,000. Great, fantastic, right? But what it brought me back to was that those people that I texted, I called, I maybe didn't have their number. Uh, I should have been on top of that a little bit better. I should have mailed more. Last year, I didn't mail much. I think my total mail spend for all of last year was about two to $3,000. I was only sending about 400 postcards a month and I closed two deals from mail, two. That's pretty good, I mean, be honest. Like I made like 40 grand in assignment fees just from those two deals that I got from the mail. It goes to show you that even though you're texting, even though you're calling, even though you're mailing, that you're still gonna miss out on some deals. But what I wanted at least was to just get, you know, 20% of that, right? Uh, that's the goal. So if, if I would have closed at a 740, um, let me see, 740 times 0.25%, that would have been 185 deals. My average assignment fee, $15,000, that's an extra $2.7 million. That means, this is what I would have made last year, which was actually my goal. My goal last year was to make 4 million. I had a higher goal than that. I wanted to make 10 million. Uh, yeah, I know you could say that it's far-fetched, but um, I'm a strong believer in my own goals. Um, if I believe I can make 10 million, I'm gonna try to make it. I'm gonna try to make it happen. Now I got over a million, which is cool. Don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not complaining, but sometimes, um, well not sometimes, just in business itself, if you really want to grow, you, you want to be happy, but dissatisfied at the same time. So I'm happy I made it, but I'm dissatisfied that I, I didn't reach my goal. So this year, everything has changed, right? Like text messaging marketing has changed all on its own. The whole lead generation process has changed. At the same time, sellers are stuck at numbers that were, we were able to do last year, but this year, you know, they're going to sell lower. At the same time, I know that I got a, reach out to people with better marketing, right? I, I not only can I just go and hit texts and RVMs and, and phone calls, that works, you know, don't get me wrong, I, I make money off of that. A lot of my deals recently have been coming off of that. But the mail scene has been absent for a while. I've never been a heavy mail guy. Last year, I think it was the most money I ever spent on mail. Most money I ever spent on mail. This year, I wanna do more, right? So if we go back to those 740, we were able to speak to 190. And then let's say for 25% of those, there was like no real way of closing the deal or um, let me see, uh, 740 divided by or minus 190 times 0.70. So let's say 30, let's go higher. Let's say 30% of those I didn't, either the deal wouldn't have worked out or there's dead airs, or maybe it was just outside of my skill set that I couldn't get the deal done and that they ended up selling to somebody else. It would have left me with 385 people, right? Now, of course, you can't just weed out like, yeah, you know, that 300 people right there, I'm gonna mail them. So I know that in order to get those 385 people, I probably would have to send about four to 5,000 pieces of mail a month. Yes, all right, it's a lot of mail, but you gotta remember the return on investment there because I only have like 40,000 people in my system, all right? So active marketing, even right now, I think I'm only actively marketing to 20,000 people. And a lot of them are like not interested, but like pure bone dry, never marketed to them and never gotten in contact with them. You know what, I'm, I'm gonna look that up because I have my REI SIFT here open. And I want to check that because this is this is key right here, right? So my database, I, I this is not a database from this year, okay? Like, yeah, I've been using REI SIF now for a little over a year, but I have built this data. This is a four-year database. So the 37,862 people that I have in here, and remember, this is not just telling me how many people this is how many properties are in here right so some of these properties are owned by multiple owners so now if i go back into my owner records how many owners do i have i don't even know i wish i had a way to do this but i have literally 5,000 pages of owners 
and each page, oh wait, I can do the math. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 5,062 5, owners divided by 10. So I got 506 owners in this database. Yes, 506. Man, that's actually a lot less than I expected. So 506 and a lot of them own multiple properties. So besides that, when we come back into this database, I'm gonna look at everybody that we've marketed to and never got a hold of them. So I'm gonna take out some stuff real quick. All the not interested, right? Because right now I have a lot of my not interested is re-entered marketing um, because I'm a beast like that. So right now in the whole system, right? In the whole entire system that I have right now, as a matter of fact, who, who isn't being marketed to or hasn't? Let me, let me see. I'm gonna add this part in here. Uh, I have 7,537 properties that we have not been able to get in contact with the owner. That is a lot, right? The average person in my database, I think owns about two properties. So let's just cut that number in half. 7,537 divided by two. So there's about 3,768 pieces of mail that I could send right now. So if I were to mail those, right? It cost me about 45 cents a mailer. That means that's $1,695 a month in mail. If I multiply that by 12, it's $20,349 in mail. I'm gonna write this down because if I spent 20 grand in mail, let's say out of that 20 grand, I closed an additional 60 deals at $15,000, that's 900 grand in assignment fees. So is it worth it to spend the 20 grand? Yes, it definitely is. Now, here's the thing. So even though, even though I have that many, I have that many people, that many uh, properties, I don't know um, what the, uh, the status is on like how many actual people I would have to mail. I'm actually gonna look into that to see what I'm gonna do. Cause right now I spend about about a thousand dollars a month in text messaging, phone calls, like actually it's probably a little bit more than that. It's like fifteen hundred, two thousand um, dollars. plus my dispo cost now is like freaking three grand a month. So I'm spending like five thousand, six thousand dollars in marketing, roughly in marketing. So if I added, like, let's say last year it was lower, it was $48,000 for the year. So 48,000 divided by, let me see, 48,000 divided by 12. I was spending $4,000 a month. So right now I'm just spending an additional 2,000. Um, so I know that if I'm at 6,000 and I add another, let's say just 2,000 for just all intensive purposes, um, eight grand a month. If I can still pull in a little over a million from spending $96,000 a year in marketing, still a win. This year is gonna be harder to get deals, but I know that the mail market is dead. And what I mean by that is that a lot of new wholesalers are not gonna do mail. Why? Because it's the most expensive. Like when you look at it, like, yeah, I can hit 10,000 people in a week, like whoosh, super easy, but to hit 10,000 people with mail, what's the, it's like what, $4,500? Yeah, $4,500. When I can hit 10,000 10, people in a week with like maybe 500 bucks. So the cost margin there is pretty steep, but this year, I'm gonna I'm gonna still try it. First quarter is over though. Um, Today is March the 27th, so I think we've closed. I'm gonna say like maybe two hundred thousand dollars in assignment fees. So nowhere near the goal of what we did last year. But again, I stopped marketing. Uh, October, November, December were my least marketed months. I had some other issues I had to solve before I started marketing again. Uh, you know, good old Uncle Sam. But now January, February, March, I've been pounding the marketing 
And just off of 200 postcards, I was able to get a deal, which is really good, right? Um, so I know I'm gonna increase in mail. I'm gonna continue with my text messaging, gonna continue with my phone calls, continue with also SEO marketing. I haven't been uh, really heavy on SEO for a long time. I used to get deals back then from it. Um, but we are gonna, you know, put a little bit more money into SEO marketing as well because we want the different marketing channels to bring in more incoming deals, right? We want more incoming marketing than what we're doing outgoing. And the only way to do that is by using several marketing channels. I'm good at all of them, all right? I'm not the best, I'll be honest, you know, like, I know that you guys might think that I'm like, oh my God, you know, you, you must be so smart. And the truth of it is like, this is all trial and error. Like, if you look at how much money I lost to see how much money I've made, you might think twice. I say that in a good way, like, I like losing money sometimes because you grow from your mistakes, right? You grow from, you know, what did you do wrong? What could you do better? And use it as a stepping stone, you know, like literally just you're stepping up little by little. And even though you, your foot might slip a little bit, you can always bring your foot back up. I think the problem with a lot of wholesalers is that they look at marketing as instant gratification. I'm gonna spend $500 and I'm gonna make 10 grand. That's not how it works. I have spent like, I don't know, the whole month of January, I didn't have a deal that closed except for a house that I bought. And we spent like $7,000 in marketing and we got nothing. February, we finally started closing deals. March, we started consistently closing again. A lot of them were follow-ups, some of them were new marketing. I got some lots on the contract that we were able to sell, I can't believe it. Land isn't completely dead, but land is part of my business too. But yeah, that's, that's all I got for now, guys. Um, it's been a full day. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this here. I've got a ton of work still to do. I've actually shot this video like four times <laughs> because my dog kept barking, my kids. I'm gonna try to go back to vlogging every day because um, I miss it and I'm gonna try to balance myself out a little bit more. I'm gonna try to dedicate more time to a lot of things. But thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it so much. I'm glad that you guys are seeing me again. Um, a lot of the old videos that I had were literally sitting on my hard drive waiting to be uploaded. I know that's kind of dumb, but it is what it is, right? So happy deal finding. Hope you guys are prospering and I'll catch you guys on another vlog.